here are a few limits that uh, we'll find useful. And uh, I should note that in these formulas, uh, x is actually a constant. I know that's kind of uh, uh, different than usual, but in these problems, we're talking about limits of sequences involving n as the index, which means that x has nothing to do with n, and th therefore it's a constant. All right, and so, uh, of course, if you have the limit of a constant, then that's just the constant. I, you know, that's just saying that if x is equal to 2, then the sequence 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, uh, yeah, that's going to converge. That's going to converge to 2. There's, there's no surprises there. Uh, the next one here, 1 over n is equal to 0. Uh, we can't plug in 0, but uh, if assuming our index starts with 1, that's 1 over 1, 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth. Uh, we, we are familiar with this from real valued functions. That's going to limit to 0. Uh, this next one, uh, to, in order to prove it, you'll have you would want to use L'Hopital's rule. Uh, I can't really write out uh, terms of the sequence because I don't know what the natural log of most whole numbers is. Uh, but that said, we know that uh, the natural log function is a slow growing function compared to the bigger function n. So the top is going to be smaller, uh, sorry, than the bottom. The bottom's going to be bigger, and as we get bigger denominators, these fractions tend to go to zero. Uh, likewise, if you take the nth root of n, or just the nth root of a constant, uh, positive constant x, that's going to eventually get be whittled down to 1, because you have to multiply more and more things together to get up to n, or to get up to that x. And therefore, they should all be smaller and closer to 1. Uh, this step right here is easier to see directly. Uh, let's let x, it needs to be some fraction less than 1. Let's suppose that x is equal to negative one-half as an example. Then uh, we'll take the z zeroth power of negative one-half, which is one. Negative one-half to the one, negative one-half squared, negative one-half cubed, negative one-half to the fourth. And you can see how these fractions are getting, you know, they're bouncing between positive and negative, but they're getting tinier and tinier, and therefore they limit uh, to zero, uh, as we were told they would do. Uh, on this next step, this one uh, is, is just something uh, that you, we could go through in more detail. Uh, you've seen this similar thing in your Calculus 1 course, uh, but here it pops back up again. e to the x is given by the limit of 1 over x over n to the n. Uh, often, you'll see this formula as 1, over 1, over, 1 plus 1 over n to the n is just e, or e to the 1 power. Uh, but it actually is true that in general, you can replace this constant with uh, x, and that'll hold. Uh, finally, this last one, we can see how that one works pretty easily. Uh, we'll, we'll just let x is equal to 2 in this case. And as we see, 2 to the 0 is 1 over 0 factorial is 1. 2 to the 1 over 2 factorial is 2. 2 cubed, sorry, 2 squared over 2 fact. oh, excuse me, uh, let's back up just a moment. Here is n is equal to 0. That's 2 to the, yeah, let's actually write this out so we don't make the mistake, right? Uh, 2 to the 0 over 0 factorial. 2 to the 1 over 1 factorial. 2 to the 2 over 2 factorial. 2 cubed over 3 factorial. 2 to the 4th over 4 factorial. 2 to the 5th over 5 factorial. So what does this sequence look like it's doing? It looks like it's getting bigger, actually. We get 1 over 1. Here we get 2 over 1. Uh, here we get 4 over 2. That's the same. Uh, here we have 8 over 6. Now it might be getting a little bit smaller. 16 over 24. Uh, and here we have 32 over 120. Oh, yeah, here's where we can see it's getting smaller and smaller. The next step would actually be 2 to the 6 over 6 factorial. Uh, that would be 64 over 720. And you can see how these fractions are getting closer and closer to nothing. So uh, there's a really quick uh, explanation of why at least a few of these uh, work. But if we have these uh, limits at our disposal, we can use them to solve more complicated limits. Uh, let's take a look at an example where we would do that. So we're going to find the limit of n factorial, sorry, limit of the natural log of n cubed over n. 
Uh, so let's see here. This is going to involve, uh, we have this fact from earlier, the limit as n goes to infinity of natural log of n over n is 0, because natural log functions grow slower than the numbers being plugged in. And uh, let's see. So in order to solve this problem, I just need to remember my log rules, really. Uh, my log rules say that if I have a power inside a logarithm, I can pull that out. 3 natural log of n over n. And because sequences, uh, le sequence limits have the same rules as function limits, I could pull out a constant multiple of 3, assuming that the limit of natural log n over n exists. And it does. In fact, we know up here it's 0. And that tells me that 0 is my limit. Here's another. 3 to the n plus 1 over n factorial. All right. Uh, first things first, let me split this up into limit as n goes to infinity of 3 to the n over n factorial plus the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n factorial. And uh, I could do this because I could split up the fraction across the numerator and uh, limit rule, sum rule says I could split up limits across sums. And uh, for this first one, I just need to remember this fact that the limit as n goes to infinity of x to the n over n factorial is 0. And, uh, well, x could equal 3, so that definitely gets me a, a 0 for this one. For the second one, I have, uh, let's see, that's 1 over, uh, these numbers are getting larger and larger. It's obviously going out to infinity. That's going to be also a limit to 0, and therefore uh, 0 is the value of the entire limit right here. One more. I'm going to find the limit. Uh, as n goes to infinity of 4n, 1 over n. So how would I approach this? Well, the fact I need to recall from earlier is the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of n is 1, and the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of x is 1, as long as x is positive. What does that have to do with this? Well, what is a fractional power but a root? This is the same problem as the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of 4n. And I can split up that root across this multiplication of 4 times n. That's the nth root of 4 times the nth root of n. So I'll break that up. Uh, this is going to be nth root of 4 times the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of n. And here, my x is 4, because 4 is greater than 0 up here. So I can replace this with a 1. And same thing because of this first rule. That's a 1. 1 times 1 is 1. And that'll get me the value of this particular limit.